Uh, that should give us some help on this problem. All right, can I erase this? Does that make sense? All right. Should we go through this, or does it make sense now? Or we can go through it if you like. That's fine. Yeah, we might as well finish this off. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see what would happen here. All right, and this is a predict the products, but we might as well show the mechanism here for practice. Catch up with you. Just the ones off the top of the store, right? Oh. I mean, yeah. Oh, I see. Oh. <laughs> so have the, and we have that it's base. Minus, yeah. yeah. What is it that we have? Sometimes he has two li, and sometimes he just has a chain and li. That kind of confuses me sometimes. So. Okay, so from the first step, we would get this. Don't forget to put the positive charge on the phosphorus. Since it started neutral, it ends up with a positive charge. Uh, okay, so that gives us this. Um, and now he brings this in. Um, now, we know that we're supposed to treat organometallics like they're just uh, carb anions, right? So we're just going to treat this. It's like a green yard, right? Yeah, it's like a green yard. Uh, it's technically, it's not a green yard, but it behaves like one. It's an alkyl lithium, so it's like a green yard. Um, all right, and these are strong bases. we got a big negative charge on a carbon, which doesn't like to have it. Um, and where are we going to take the proton um, from? Well, from here. Why did we do that? To liberate this pair of electrons, which we need to make this other pi bond over here. Um, and then that would give us Now, he said to show all the organic products. So a lot of people would lose points here by not showing this product. This is organic, so we have to show this. This is what happens to this alkyl lithium when it picks up the organic proton, right? Organic is carbon hydrogen. Carbon containing. When he says organic product, he means all carbon containing products. So if we had used a um, inorganic base, we wouldn't have to show that. Um, so, uh, but if you've got a carbon containing product, you have to show it. Inorganic base being like Br minus? Is that kind of base? Um, let's see, I don't know if there's any common uh, inorganic bases that would be used here, actually. Uh, I mean, after all, this is an inorganic base. Or this is an inorganic base. Why are they inorganic? Because they don't have carbons. I don't know if these are strong enough to actually do this reaction or not, but uh, yeah. Can VR minuses sometimes take hydrogens off and then like act as bases, or they're not very good? Um, only from something that's very acidic. Only from something very acidic. So you're basically asking whether Br- is a good base, Yeah. right? Um, it's a terrible base it's because its conjugate is a very strong acid. So this can only deprotonate people who are already positive. Those are things that are already pretty uh, acidic, basically. So we should finish this first, but... Uh, um, you would never want to show this bromine deprotonating this oxygen because this is not very acidic. However, it would be acceptable to show the bromine deprotonating this oxygen because this oxygen is very eager to get deprotonated to get rid of its uh, get rid of its positive charge. Yeah. So as far as problem solving, even this is not very realistic, but I think this would be accepted in a problem. So in problems, it's acceptable to use um, a Br minus or a Cl minus or an I minus to deprotonate something that's positive. But you can't deprotonate anything that's neutral because it's a really a terrible base. All right, that actually comes up quite a bit because uh, very often this is the leaving group and then you use that to deprotonate uh, the guy that just came in behind you. Right, um, and the HBr you said is very strong, kind of like HCl. Yeah, well, this is H3O plus, which we know is a strong acid. We, we treat that as a strong acid, like uh, kind of What about like, HBr? Well, what about HBr? Is that a strong acid? Yeah, HBr. Uh, is one of the strong acids. This tends like to pretty HCL. much be, yeah, like hydrochloric. That's okay. right. Sorry to go back. Yeah. To <laughs> okay. No, that's good. Those are good points. Uh, all right. So as we were saying, don't forget to draw what happened to this guy. Um, yeah. So the problems that I show are all organic products. So we have to show this. Uh, now we have this. Oh, so I guess we're done. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, um, so notice 
he could have given you a third step where he put this in. And, that's where you're and then you would do a Wittig reaction. Okay. All right, but here he's just testing whether you know how to make the elide. So we do that Wittig reaction, we still have that other product. We still, we still have two products. You'd still have this. We'd have three products, wouldn't we? Um, you'd have this and... Um, so we'd have the product. Yeah, you would. Wait, 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 what would it be if we did it? Should we go through that? Yeah. Okay. So let's say that we added this third step. Go ahead and try drawing what the next product would be for step three. That's right. Okay, so again, the way I like to do that, you can just line them up like this. Make sure that you line up the oxygen opposite from the okay. phosphorus. The oxygen should be opposite from the phosphorus. And now I'm just going to exchange these two groups. I'll move this phosphorus group down here and the two methyl groups up here. So where the phosphorus used to be, I put the two methyl groups and where the two methyl groups Instead used to be. Instead of redrawing that other yeah, uh, yeah, so technically you could switch these two as well, yeah. but you can see that this is maybe a little more efficient. Okay, all right, and uh, then that would give us our products here. Uh, and we still have to include this along from the previous step uh, as well. Why does this have to be included? How do we know this is organic? pH stands for phenyl, which remember is like a benzene ring. So that's where the, uh, the carbons are there. Oh, it's so this is organic. And anything else could be there. Bromine, that's oxygen, right. phosphorus. That's right. So organic doesn't mean that it only has carbons. It just means it has at least one carbon. Anything with at least one carbon for our purposes, for the exams, anything with at least one carbon uh, would be an organic yeah, product. If he says we show all the organic also. products. Okay. okay. So um, one thing we learned here again is it looks like you guys were already pretty good at drawing the products from the video. Again, we learned how to make an illide. So obviously, you want to make a flashcard of how to make an illide. Um, also, notice, um, I guess you were already uh, inoculated against this, but a lot of people would have just assumed that this would be a Wittig reaction right here. A lot of people are lazy and assume, oh, anytime I see a phosphorus, that's a Wittig reaction. So you can see you can't do that. If you see a phosphorus, that might be a phosphorus that's part of an illide, and then that would do a Wittig reaction, but it might be a phosphorus that has not been made into an illide yet, and then maybe the reaction is to make the illide. So you can't assume that phosphorus means uh, 